Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is another weekly rundown of updates, cool features and amazing things that has been happening within the Blender community. And we're going to kick things off by talking about some things that was discussed within the meeting notes. So, something that we talked about last week, which is also, you know, part of the update is that the Blender 2.83 splash screen is here. So, we talked about Party Pog and in case you want to see that, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can see the video where we kind of explored the party pog and we also did a couple of look around and you know talked about things that were working and things that were not working within this particular scene so in case you want to see this beautiful scene that, that is made by ian hubert you can simply go over to the link in the description and get this another cool stuff that was also happening within the time where this was going on is the box sprint so box sprint has actually taking effect and there is an update to the present box sprint that we have right now. Now all of these updates that is going on is so we can have a much more better and stable Blender 2.9 during the time of release. There is a master open and a master close which has a time duration for new features 5 to 7 weeks and also for bug fixes which is going to be 3 to 5 weeks. Now if you simply go all the way down you can read a bit more of this but going all the way down you would also notice that there is a time duration that these things have been made and you can find them very useful i have come to love and appreciate all of these tiny breakdowns that the guys from blender foundation are doing and it is definitely giving us even way more visual feedback on how things are running so from the 13th which is next week all the way to 17th there's going to be the beacon 2 and we're also going to be getting beacon 3 from the 3rd to 7th of august so on the 26th of august 2020 blender 2.9 will be released which fortunately seems to be my birthday which is going to be something really nice for all of us to actually talk about and i kind of think that the guys from blender foundation are doing me some very cool good by giving me a gift on that particular day which is blender 2.9 so blender 2.9 will be available if you want to read more about this schedule and see several things that have been proposed for this particular box print link is going to be in the description where you can catch these things and also start getting good with it now while we're talking about things going on a day before this was updated don reason they made a public cancellation of blender conference 2020 and this is due to the present pandemic that is happening all over the world and it is with deep regret that he's actually doing this right now there is also a blog post to this just in case you want to read these things you can you know go ahead and see this for yourself as i really wish you know that this particular pandemic didn't happen within this time and it would have been good to have another beautiful conference and this is not only affecting the conference that we're having right now there is also some sort of uh, conversation if the 2021 conference is even going to hold so he's going on to say that until things gets back to normal it simply means that the early conference in spring 2021 is being postponed until further notice so we just simply have to keep our fingers crossed and believe that things will get back to normal as soon as possible. But in light of all of these things going on, there is a beautiful release of Blender 2.83.2. So this is the second installment of the LTS version of Blender 2.83. And you know this is like the very first time that we're having a long time support and just last week we also reported that if you're working with steam if you're working with uh some other third parties you would be able to get the blender 2.83.1 release although at the point of recording this i don't really think you know i don't know if it is available on steam right now the previous version is available on steam which is blender 2.83.1 so you can get that there but you know 2.83.2 if you want to get it you can simply come right here and get it and for the lts of course you can see some of the fixes and some of them are here there is also going to be a link to some of the other fixes just in case you haven't seen them so in case you're looking for fixes for blender 2.83.1 i'm also going to put a link in the description for you guys to see that so these are the fixes for this one and if you want to see an overview of the updates that will be happening with blender 2.83 and 2.9 all the way to 3.7 there is a link in the description that talks more about the long-term support program that the guys from blender foundation are looking forward to you know giving everyone so a huge shout out to guys from blender foundation for making this one available and with these beautiful things said let us dive into one of the most interesting parts of the weekly rundown actually before we even talk about one of the cool things that you're going to see or one of the cool updates that is now available with blender 2.9 let's give a very short shout out to a wonderful blender creator known as 
Luke Burris. So I went over to Twitter and I found out that this guy actually has an amazing tool which you can download from Gumroad. I'm still thinking maybe we should do a review about this, play with it and see how you can work with it. As this tool by default is an add-on which he has created to actually help anyone work directly in their viewport and edit UVs on the fly. So this would definitely make a lot of sense as it is a tool that would simply automate the UV mapping and also give you some super fast uh, mode of working with your UV directly in Blender. He has a couple of contributors here and if you want to see more about this, I'm going to put a link in the description for you guys just in case you want to test this thing out. Alright, so this time we're going to dive directly into Blender and take a look at a couple of features, you know, some things that you guys will be able to try out now if you have Blender 2.9. At the point of recording, some of these things are actually not there yet. Some of them are still set to be commit, so they are not available in Blender but obviously over time some of them are going to you know be there the alembic has a brand new exporter which is based on the usd and we already talked about the whole thing going on with blender foundation and the guys at tangent lab yeah so this one is cool and at the same time we've already talked about the pose brush this is something that pablo dubaro is actually working on and we mentioned this last week as this now has an option to affect loose path on the other hand there are updates to both the outliner and also several overrides now some of these things are still being committed so you might probably not be able to play with them but some are actually here and i will simply go ahead and you know show you guys the very first one which i'd like to share with you guys is the uv rip tool so with blender open if you simply take a look at this default queue once we go through and press tab on our keyboard you would notice we already have a rip tool that is living right here it's living and breathing doing everything it has to do and it only works with you know a default edit mode all right but now they have found a way to pop this over to uv so if you simply select a particular point you can rip this part off all right so i would go ahead and select somewhere else like this and rip this part off select something like that and rip this part off so just in case you want to unwrap a model directly in 3d this tool will do this right here so you can rip this and you know do several stuff it doesn't matter how you want to get it going because you can simply select the edges as well and you can rip the edges apart so really really nice now if you're thinking about how does this apply to uv as one of the implementation that is now available in blender how you can do this is simple i'll just simply move over here select this go over to the section called uv and with this selected once i press the tab key on the keyboard make sure i have my faces select this and tap a and click right here so i can simply select this right now and lose a part meanwhile let's go through and make sure we have this selected cool so with this here i would switch over to a face let's select a different face select this and i can lose this part i can select this right here and i can rip this apart so if you're looking forward to ripping your uvs this makes sense i mean you can choose to rip these uvs uh, by edges and you can also choose to rip them by vertices if you switch over to edges you can select a particular edge like this select the rip tool and you can rip this apart so in line with the uv there is also an update that deals with the correct face attributes now this works regardless of uh, textures or color vertices this just simply works oh so, how this works is simple i mean if you try to go over to the blender meeting notes or maybe just simply search you might probably not see this but then i will show you guys so you know all of those times where you just want to stretch things and you want the face to align properly with the uv or the textures yeah so how this works is by default let's actually drag in a texture for clarity so we can get some sort of visual feedback while we're working with this so going over to this section which is the shader editor i'm getting a brick texture which you downloaded off the internet i'm going to connect this over to the base and now if i switch over to the shading you can see that we have this here now where do you find the correct face attributes you find this around here and you can only find this once you press tab on your keyboard and you're within the edit mode 
this is when you can find that all right so we will try out what this does before and after so you guys can have a good idea of how these things actually work so first things first we'll select the vertices and select just this part and then we will transform let's transform this to see what we have all right this doesn't look bad if i also push this you can see we're having some distortion mm -hmm. i would also go ahead and select uh, an edge so let's select this edge and you can see all right that doesn't look bad now does it of course it does okay so what happens if we simply go here and click on correct face attributes so it is going to correct the attributes of either the uv or either the colors or the textures while you're transforming this object so a very clear example is if you select an edge now and you move isn't this clean tell me this is not clean all right you can also select this and you can move this over to that part let's also get this one going and this is just beautiful i would also proceed to select the separate part just simply make sure that you have this turned on while you're doing that and you can get some pretty cool alignment and get a very cool visual feedback while you're working with this so this makes sense all right so contrary to what you're having once you have these things turned off let's go ahead and try that again so contrary to what you're having like this you can simply have some pretty cool face attribution when you're working with this and this works regardless of vertices edges or face so depending on what you want to get you can definitely get these things working and while we're still talking about things that works there is an update to the ocean modifier so just in case you don't know there is an ocean modifier that exists directly in blender let's simply get rid of this and bring this all the way down so this ocean modifier actually converts any object to some sort of ocean regardless of what shape you have like right now i have this i can go over to the modifier click right here go over to this section called ocean and boom we have ourselves a beautiful ocean so with this now you can simply you know repeat this ocean if you want you can play with the time play with the warping but right now we are seeing that there is an update coming to this which is known as exposing the end vectors and using these things as map this uh within the time of recording hasn't been you know available yet but if you want to see more about this you can go over to the link which is going to be in the description and read more about this and there is a cool example of how this would work so if i simply click right here you can start noticing that you can simply generate some stuff and you'll be able to use these things to drive the ocean modifier so if you want to see more about these things link is going to be in the description for you guys and i would also go ahead and show you guys a preview of what this actually looks like so this is some of the cool features some other features that we've also talked about which we've already covered so just in case you're wondering why is it that we've already covered some of these things we kind of cover most of these things before the guys from blender foundation actually puts them as a documented stuff or before they discuss them within the meetings so that is the main reason why we kind of get this news quite early so we've already talked about the updates to the color filter which now has the fill, and we've also talked about the updates to the mask by color and we talked about these things last week and in case you don't know how that works is also pretty simple so we can can dive right from here go over to the sculpting section and we also said that there is a couple of updates right here so with the color filter we made mention of the fill which is now a brand new feature that you can work with so we also said that whenever you want to start working with this you need to come right here and convert this to vectors so depending on what you're trying to work on depending on what you're trying to create you can easily have access to any of these new features and start working with them directly here in blender so this is definitely going to be about it more and more feature updates will be coming over to blender soon and we will do our best to cover most of them and that's about it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section of course we're not so happy that there's not going to be a blender conference this year but probably this pandemic actually dies down and there should be one sometime next year on the other hand i'm very excited to see that blender 2.8 3.2 is now here so if you're working for production if you're using blender as a production to you find comfort using this tool as most of the bugs that were not fixed with blender 2.8 3.1 are now being fixed so if you're excited about the new features as well i will strongly suggest that you go ahead and try them and on the other hand if you're also excited about the whole pose brush and also the sculpting feature the uv rip feature 
tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's definitely going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace